first I read. Thank you. I'm Matt Seckler with Stonefield Engineering. We also work with Langen Consulting on the transportation issues. Now, I know everyone here has sat in, and I know it was previously referred to, the traffic that you deal with at this intersection of Mars and Spring. And I think the next video, the next slide, will generally show what everyone here is pretty familiar with. This is just some drone video. This is in the morning. It's sped up, so you're not watching it necessarily in real time. But morning rush hour generally works okay. Um, in a minute, you're going to see the evening rush hour. But what you'll t see out here is the way the signalized intersection works is it doesn't work well because of a number of issues. One, you'll see the excessive queuing that exists on Spring Street. Going through this area, and we've used the town's uh, uh, mobility study. We've done counts out here in 2016 and 2018. What we know is about a third of the traffic going through Morristown is not destined for Mar Morristown. It's not coming from Morristown. It's not going to Morristown. It's just traveling through the area. So you have a regional flow of traffic through this intersection. And what causes in the evening rush hour is these huge delays along spring going down towards 287 or up towards Springwell. And you see that here. You can see the issues um, with this intersection. It takes multiple cycles to exit from spring. You have that kind of, you wait, you idle, your car sits there for 60 seconds at a time. Then you speed up for 20 seconds when the light is green, slam on the brakes, do it again, do it again, do it again. And you'll see you know, continually through this video, those issues along spring. Um, one of the issues that you have here um, is also the site itself. The site is everyone here, everyone frequents it. A lot of traffic is generated by the site on its own, but it's really, really difficult to get out of this site. Trying to make a left turn or to go back towards 287 or make a left to get to Mars is near impossible. Trying to come out on Spring Place, the angle of Spring Place, the queue along Spring Street, the, it's very, very difficult with that proximity to get a left turn out of the site. So not only do you have a regional issue with the traffic flow on Spring, but you also have a site that really can't, doesn't have good access out. And so we have those two problems that we're balancing on top of this development. So we have this regional issue, this concern at this intersection. And when we would look through the possible solutions and how to fix it, as Phil alluded to, the easy things developers like to do is let's just do something to the traffic signal. Let's pay you know, a few thousand dollars, fix the traffic signal timing. Well, that signal is maxed out. There's really very little you could squeeze out of it. It's also coordinated with other signals around the area. There's really not a whole lot you could do from a signal perspective. You could add signs, add a little stripe, even widening a little bit in this area. There's really a limited amount that you could get your bang for your buck here because it's gonna have to tie in further down the line. So even if you could, get an extra lane at the intersection, it's going to have to tie down as you get closer to the green or when you get further up towards Speedwell. So you're really limited in terms of what you could do with what I would call a traditional solution at this intersection. So one of the things we looked at here is we looked at a roundabout. Now a roundabout is not your typical New Jersey traffic circle. It's not the Somerville circle, it's not the circles down the shore, it's not the Ledgewood circle, it is different. And there's a reason why it's different. It is designed for slower speeds, and it's designed for a pedestrian scale traffic flow. And I think that's a key here. When you just heard Robert's slides about how we're going to create this pedestrian allay and this space along the frontage here, we want to tie it in and create a pedestrian area. This roundabout reduces car speeds to about 15 miles an hour, but keeps it continuously flowing. So instead of having the idling and the exhaust along spring when you're in the evening rush hour, you're moving cars through the area on a, on a continuous basis around this roundabout at approximately 15 miles an hour, which is much slower than when you get now, when you speed up, you, you, you go to 30 miles an hour and back down to zero. 30 miles an hour, back down to zero through this area. Um, in addition, what a roundabout does is it reduces the crossing distances from pedestrian standpoint. And I'll, again, this is the existing on the left, the proposed on the right. And I'll go through the benefits of a roundabout, but I want to highlight one of the key issues here is that this fix is only possible with right-of-way from the, from the developer. This is not something that the town could go in and say, this is a great idea, who cares about the office tower, we're going to build this, it includes right-of-way that is on the property basically where the 7-Eleven building is now and on the other side of the corner of Spring and Mars. So you're talking about right-of-way developer controls 
and is only able to be unlocked through this developer. If not, you're talking about an incredibly long condemnation process. You know, counties, it could take you know, decades for something to be acquired to put this through. So again, this is, a, this is a solution that because it's a unique situation where the developer controls this land, there's the ability to create this roundabout. How roundabouts work and how they differ from traffic circles. Again, I mentioned the speed, number one. Two, circles have a whole different arrangement in terms of the right of way, who gets to go. Sometimes it's the person in the circle, sometimes it's the person on the outside of the circle. The way a roundabout works, and you'll, I'll show some videos later, the people inside the circle always have the right of way. People on the outside yield to the people on the inside. In terms of pedestrians, pedestrians have the right of way. We are proposing rapid flashing beacons, those are the things you press, lights up, lets people know that someone's crossing the street, and traffic stops. And again, we will show videos in a second showing how this works on roundabouts, how pedestrians are respected at roundabouts. The key aspect here in terms of how pedestrians cross is the crossing is shorter. In the old situation where the traffic signal exists today, you're we talking about crossing four lanes at a time every time you want to cross the street. And not only that, you get to that light, you press the button, and you wait. And you wait and wait and wait until it decides to tell you walk, and then you go. At a roundabout, you press the button, and then you go. You actually become the priority over the car. Lastly, in terms, again, as I mentioned, how you drive a roundabout is you yield on the way into the roundabout. Benefits of roundabout. Studies have shown an increased reduction in fatalities, reduction in inj injuries, and enhances pedestrian safety, reduces congestion. You'll see videos in a second, models that we've used using the town's model as well as um, the recent developments that are going on around the site um, in terms of how, they, how it reduces congestion. You reduce congestion, you reduce pollution and fuel use in the area. Very easy to maintain. It's not like the light goes out or someone a truck knocks down a pole. You got to go back out there to fix. And it complements to other common community values. Again, this is extending the streetscape. This is creating a sense of place, that gateway connection on your way to the green when you come into the neighborhood. Safety comparison to roundabouts, and this is one of the reasons why it's so safe. What you see here on the right is a standard signalized intersection and all the conflict points. Yellow are all the opportunities where, sick, where cars could crash into each other. Red is where the pedestrians have conflicts with the vehicles. Roundabout, much simpler and much slower speeds. Roundabout examples in New Jersey. So New Jersey, as well as the Federal Highway Administration, has been pushing roundabouts as an option uh, to complement, uh, as, as an option instead of traffic signals because of all those benefits. This is in Princeton, New Jersey. This is actually right uh, on Alexander uh, Avenue, which is an entrance if you're coming from Route 1 into downtown Princeton. This is basically on the campus, a high level of pedestrian activity. And this uh, has gotten, I think, within the last five to six years, and has been proven to be very, very effective in terms of enhancing uh, safety. What about traffic? Well, I'll, I'll show you how the traffic works. This is Westfield, New Jersey. Again, uh, more of in a downtown setting. You have a train station. This is the Westfield train station here. This is a roundabout. Uh, this is actually a state highway, Route 28, a county roadway, South Avenue, and the roundabout in the middle, um, and closely spaced signalized intersections on the sides. This is a roundabout in action in Westfield, New Jersey, with, again, some complications of the train. This is in Rutherford, New Jersey. This actually has a train station right here, where a train actually has an outgrade crossing. So you have a high level of pedestrians walking through the area. There's a bus stop here, a bus stop here, and you are built into the downtown. So again, showing that a roundabout is a solution that can be utilized in the downtown area. Um, we actually have the drone video of the Rutherford train station, just so everyone can see. This is at a one and a half speed, so a little faster than, you know, than standard speeds, but we just want to show basically how the roundabout operates uh, as it relates to both larger vehicles going through here, pedestrians crossing in the roundabout. Um, I think there's actually the train is letting out right now. What time of the day is it? This is, um, this is about 4.30. Here comes the train. This is about 4, this is about 4 30. So what you'll see that's unique about this site is again, you have a train, so you're actually going to see cars stack up and still being able to flow the traffic circle through here. You're going to see pedestrians coming through. There was a 
There'll be another tractor trailer coming through the area and be able to model through the intersection. The difference between this roundabout and the roundabout we're proposing, because of the volume difference, this roundabout is a single lane roundabout, what we're proposing is a multi-lane roundabout. So it allows for additional capacity than what you see here. And here there's a whole bunch of people about to get off this train and cross the street. You can see here, this is a tractor trailer coming through the roundabout. Being able to circulate. We're going to have a pedestrian crossing in a second once the... Cindy, I don't know if you want to speed this up just a tiny bit. Now you'll see all the pedestrians release and come across the roundabout. Again, very similar operations. What you see, again, the benefit here is that the traffic stops for the pedestrians crossing the street, and then they resume going through the intersection. So as opposed to a traffic signal where the cars have to then wait 20, 30, 40 seconds to release, once the pedestrian gets across, it releases again. And again, this happens every single train that comes by, every rush hour time period. But again, I would state what we're proposing is a multi-lane roundabout, which is a higher uh, capacity. And I think the next slide, here's some more pedestrians crossing, the next slide, which is the simulations. So what we did is we took the town model in addition to adding additional traffic related to the proposed parking garage that's located basically behind the Dunkin' Donuts on Wilmot Street. So all the new traffic that's generated by all the developments utilizing that parking garage was added to the model. What you see here is your existing condition. Very similar to what you see in the drone, you can see the backups on spring heading towards Speedwell. This is Speedwell at the top. This is spring coming down. Uh, that delay, that again, takes one, two, three, four lights to get through. This is basically the model of how it works today. Um, and you'll see, again, the terrible trying to get out of spring place. I think the uh, traffic simulation aren't quite as aggressive as I think some of the drivers trying to get out of the shopping center. So they're not quite getting out there. But that is the existing condition. This is the roundabout model and shows the freeing up along Spring Place and coming to and from the green. What we are not fixing, obviously, is the congestion up towards the Speedwell intersection. Again, that is something for another area that we don't control right away in that area. We don't have the ability to, to widen out, do anything in that location. But what you do see is a major step forward in terms of freeing up the queues that exist along Spring Street. The other thing I want to mention is why this roundabout and the access design is so important. It is estimated about 60 to 70 percent of the people that utilize this office building and drive will want to come in and leave to get to 287, I-287. So again, as the intersection is designed today, you know how difficult it is to get back that direction. Having the roundabout allows you to either come out that right in, right out driveway on Mars and you turn around the roundabout to get towards 287, or what we are proposing is realigning Spring Place. We are moving it further from the intersection of Mars. We are aligning it so it meets at a 90 degree angle instead of that angle that exists today. And we're proposing to signalize it. So in terms of what you see today, why it's so difficult to make a left out, we've eliminated the queue, we've added a traffic signal, and we're also allowing people to use a Mars Street exit to get back to 287. So again, this roundabout solves not only a regional issue, but also allows for this site, whatever it will be, and we're proposing an office building, allows this site to eventually have access back to 287 where it's extremely difficult today. So again, what we've tried to balance here, understanding the town's priorities, is solving a regional traffic problem while also promoting pedestrian safety. We're trying to connect not only the improvements that we have along the streetscape, along our property, but also making it easier to connect people to the green through the use of this roundabout. I'm going to hand it back to Roger, who's actually going to explain the building now that we've talked all about the... Morristown.